All right, well, we have a calculator now, so I'll actually be able to give you an answer on this one. Uh, eventually, I'd like to get the calculator that appears on the screen so you can actually see me typing it in, but in the meantime, we'll just deal with this. So here we have a solution of water that has a boiling point of 102.3 degrees. And normally, we know that the boiling point of water is 100 degrees, so we can figure out that the change in the boiling point is the difference between 102.3 and 100. And hence, the difference in the boiling point is 2.3 degrees Celsius. So normal water, you put something in it, it went up by 2.3 degrees Celsius. Now, the formula for the change in boiling point is the change in boiling point equals um, this thing called the Van Hoff factor, which we'll come back to, times constant Kb times the molality. And so right now, at the moment, we know the change in the boiling point, at the moment we do not know the molality, we should know Kb, and we're going to talk about now we know I. Anyway, first off, <clears throat> we need to know that this is a molecular substance. So if it's a molecular substance, that means every one unit that dissolves, um, it doesn't break up at all. So that means I equals 1, as opposed to something like NaCl, which breaks up into Na plus and Cl minus, there I would equal 2. But since this is not NaCl, we know I equals 1. So that's good. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. We know for water, Kb, this is a constant, equals 0.52 Celsius degrees per molal. In other words, for every molal of concentration, the, the, um, the boiling point goes up by 0.52. So from that information, we now know change in boiling point, we know Kb, we know I, we can solve and find the molality. So let's do that. So that means that molality equals the change in the boiling point over I times Kb, or 2.3 Celsius degrees over 1 times 0.52. So if we do that, 2.3 divided by 0.52, we come to the conclusion that this must be a 4.42 mole al solution of this molecular substance. Now that's not our final answer. If we notice, they told us how much solid dissolved, but we don't know the molar mass. So we're trying to now figure out what the molar mass of this substance is. So I'm going to erase all this and just leave what I have now that it's 4.42 mole val solution. So that's my new sort of known. So 4.42 mole al solution. Now what is making up this solution? We have 67.6 grams of an unknown, let's call it X, and we have 300 grams of water. And the way we do this, um, so we're trying to determine, there's a couple ways to think about this. The way I like to think about it is, Let's, let's fill in what we know here again. We have molality, and we know molality equals the moles of your solute divided by your kilograms of solvent. So in this situation, I know my molality. I don't know my moles of solute yet. This is an unknown, and I don't really know my kilograms of solvent, but I can find that pretty easily. So if I have 300 grams of water, 300 grams of water, is 1,000 grams in a kilogram. So that means that there are 0.3 kilograms of water. So I have 0.3 kilograms of solvent. So now I know this. So once again, I have an equation with only one unknown I can solve. I can find the moles of solute. So that means that my moles of solute, let's call that, you can use moles, we use N. So N equals the molality times the kilograms of solvent. So N equals um, the molality, which is 4.42 moles per kilogram, that's technically the units, times 0.3 kilograms. So if I do that, 4.42 times 0.3, I get that I have 1.3, I'm going to round, 3.3 moles of solvent. So I now know I have 1.33 moles of solvent. And again, I'm trying to find the molar mass. I still haven't used the 67.6 grams. So let's think. If there are 67.6 grams, and that represents 1.33 moles, 
If I divide those two numbers, I get 50.83 grams per mole. And that is my molar mass of my unknown. Now, if I want to check this, what a good thing to do is to go through and do the problem in the forward direction. In other words, take my mass, figure out how many moles I have, calculate my molality, just, just do this problem like it's a regular thing. And we can actually confirm that this is our answer. Um, but I'm going to stop here. If you want to do that, that's certainly a good way to uh, check yourself in the test. But anyway, um, that's our final answer.